let's talk about uh, Friday's event. And I think this time around we can call it event because we haven't had one for a while. Uh, USDA crop production report, the WASD figures were out. What did you make of the numbers? Well, I, I think for corn, in, in most respects, the numbers were pretty much as expected. Uh, USDA raised their average yield forecast by five bushels per acre, raised their production forecast by 150 million bushels. And then on the consumption side, I think in line with our recent pace of sales, they did raise their export projection by 175 million bushels. Bottom line didn't change the projection of year-ending stocks very much. And compared to the forecast two months ago, uh, they did lower their price projection a bit on corn. Uh, on soybeans, again, raised the yield forecast by about 1.8 bushels per acre, which is a sizable increase for beans. Production number went up about 100 million bushels. Export projection also went up. And bottom line, uh, still projecting fairly small year-ending stocks of uh, about 170 million bushels. On the average season's price for cash corn, they lowered both ends by 30 cents. Uh, it's been pretty clear that farmers did not market this year's crop early. Would you agree with the 30 cent drop? I, I think they're right that, you know, we're going to be in the low to mid $4 range as an average price for this year. Uh, even with some increase in consumption, we're, we're going to have plentiful year-ending stocks. And you might also argue that they're a little bit generous, perhaps, on their feed projection for corn this year, uh, indicating that with a big crop, we'd normally see some residual or unexplained use of corn. But uh, bouncing back as high as they have projected is, is pretty uh, generous, I think. So I don't see really a change in the overall situation of abundant to surplus stocks and, and relatively low prices of corn. Any reason to believe that the export market would pick up any more than USDA is considering at this time? At this juncture, I don't see a strong indication that it would. Uh, uh, if we see prices remain very low and competitive in the world marketplace, uh, there is a chance that that would stimulate some increased consumption. Uh, some talk of whether China, for example, might use this period of lower prices to rebuild some inventories and if they chose to do that, then we might see some some bigger sales yet this year. So uh, I, th I think the bottom line is uh, exports could be what I would call substantially larger than projected without changing the bottom line in terms of our inventory of corn. Another 100 million bushels one way or another doesn't change us from kind of a surplus to any kind of tightness for this current marketing year. Any good argument that the ethanol figure, our crush for ethanol uh, grind, might be bigger than expected? At, at this juncture, no. Uh, I mean, we have seen a bit of a rebound from last year, uh, which was down because of reduced trade, particularly reduced exports of ethanol. But we're still running below the level of two years ago on ethanol production in September and October of this year. Uh, something, I think, can be made of what EPA decides in terms of their 2014 rulemaking for biofuels. If, as rumored, that they are going to lower the mandates uh, for renewable fuels, I think that's really going to take some steam out of the E85 momentum that we have and, and would argue that we will not auger higher on, on ethanol crush this year. Turn your attention to the soybeans. You mentioned the 170 million bushel carryout. It's still a fairly tight supply. There's no question it, it's tight. Uh, uh, continues what we saw last year following the small crop of 2014, but uh, with continued good demand for soybean meal and soybeans in the export market, uh, we're going to use up most of this year's larger crop. And uh, I think uh, as long as those stocks look to be very tight, uh, prices are going to be supported at, at much higher levels relative to corn than what we've seen in the past. Moving forward, I, I think the big question is South American production. Uh, the market is anticipating kind of in a big way that production will be large enough to meet uh, strong world demand uh, in the last half of our marketing year. Uh, if anything goes wrong with that crop or demand turns out to be stronger than currently projected, 
then then that would suggest that we will need to see an increase in production in soybeans in the U.S. in 2014. So I I think uh, you know we're still kind of on the bubble in terms of soybeans whether we have to do some rationing yet this marketing year or not. And uh, that uncertainty, I think, for at least for the next few months until we get a better handle on South America, is going to support soybean prices and and may eventually mean that we need to see higher prices for next year's crop in order to attract a few more bean acres. At this point, that's not the case, that uh, corn really is the better option for producers. I think the budgets would indicate in, in the main producing areas, the heart of the Corn Belt, uh, that, that corn still pencils out a little higher margin than soybeans. We might see for continuous corn or second year corn, uh, if people are still anticipating some kind of a yield drag, uh, soybean prices relative to corn might be high enough to pull a few of those acres into soybeans. But at this juncture, I, I would not envision uh, any kind of substantial shift. And when you recognize that in 2013, we had a lot of acreage of cropland that just did not get planted, uh, suggests that we have the potential uh, for large planted acres combined of corn and soybeans next year. So uh, we may need those acres on soybeans. The question is, uh, will we have too many acres of corn and, and continue the surplus that we have this year? The caveat that could drive acreage might be out of Washington, D.C. and RFS policy. You know, to some extent, if, if uh, EPA rulemaking is as rumored and we do see a cutback in the mandates and uh, that's upheld by the courts eventually, it does say that uh, we, we may see some uh, drawdown in, in terms of the amount of corn needed relative to expectations. Uh, but I think that would also be true on, on biodiesel as well, would say uh, it would take some of the steam out of this momentum we have on soybean oil consumption for biodiesel. So uh, at the margin, I, I think uh, EPA policy and how the courts eventually rule on that could be important for both commodities. Thank you so much for joining us, Daryl. Thank you. Daryl Good, Ag Economist from the University of Illinois. I'm U of I Extensions, Todd Gleason.